What's up guys, Sagi here, and welcome to another Tech Gear Talk. Today I'm gonna to give you 10 reasons why the Canon M50 is still a good entry-level mirrorless camera in 2020. New cameras keep coming out and there's definitely benefits to more advanced models, but I think it's important that you look at what will actually work for you and what you need rather than automatically buying the latest and greatest camera. So I'm gonna give you my top 10 reasons for why I think you should still consider the M50. And I also added a bonus item at the end, which I know you're going to love. All right, so let's get started. And the first reason why I think the M50 is still a good camera in 2020 is that it's easy to use and has everything that you need to learn photography and video. There are so many times when people get caught up in the hype and they buy a first camera that's excellent, but is just too advanced for them. And then they end up being overwhelmed. And the M50 is extremely simple to use and at the same same time, it has all the more advanced modes that you need to grow, whether you're doing photography or video. When you get it, for photography, you can start shooting in full auto mode, which Canon calls program or P on the mode dial. This means that the M50 will pick the right aperture, shutter speed, and ISO for you, and all you need to do is concentrate on framing your shot. As you start learning more about exposure, you can move to aperture priority or shutter speed priority. And if you're not familiar with these, aperture priority means that you pick the aperture or how wide you want the opening in the lens to be. And the camera will adjust the shutter speed for you to make sure that you have just the right amount of light coming in for a good exposure. Shutter speed priority is the exact opposite. You pick a shutter speed, which is how long you want the shutter to stay open and the camera will pick an aperture. So you can see it's really easy to learn about exposure with the M50 and you can see the results in the LCD and then play around. Now, once you get a better understanding of exposure, then you can move to manual mode where you pick the aperture, the shutter speed and the ISO and you have full control over every element of your exposure. Now, once you know how to do that, you can pick up any camera in the world and be able to get a proper exposure. Now, of course, not all cameras look the same and the buttons and dials might be in different locations, but once you find aperture, shutter speed, and ISO on any camera, you'll know how to use it. And the M50 even has exposure compensation, which gives you more advanced options for intentionally over or under exposing your image. And if you need help with exposure, I'll link to a video that explains everything and will give you more detail to help you out. Now, moving on to video, when you're starting out, you can just select a frames per second option. Then you set your shutter speed accordingly and you're all set. And in that respect, video is simpler than photography because you very rarely change your shutter speed. And I actually have a two part tutorial about setting up the M50 for video, which which covers everything you need to know. Part one covers what you need to do before you start shooting in terms of the actual setup of the camera. Part two teaches you how to shoot and then easily achieve beautiful results. And I'll put links to those up in the corner and in the description. All right, so let's move on. And the next reason why I still really like the M50 is that it has outstanding autofocus. One of the features that I'm never willing to compromise on is autofocus. Yes, I know that people use manual focus for years, but I don't have to anymore. So what's great here is that whether I use the electronic viewfinder or the LCD on the back, the M50 uses Canon's fantastic dual pixel autofocus system, which has always been one of my favorites. This gives the M50 the edge over Canon DSLR cameras, which only use a dual pixel autofocus when using the LCD. It's extremely reliable. It has face and eye tracking for photography, face tracking for video, and it even has subject tracking for both. So I can just click on a subject and the M50 will follow it and then keep it in focus even as it moves through the frame and gets closer or farther away from the camera. When shooting portraits, the M50 will automatically detect a subject's eye and lock on it for focus, so you can just concentrate on framing your shot and engaging with your subject. For video, as soon as a person enters the frame or if I have the camera facing me, the autofocus system automatically detects me and starts to track my face. And again, I love the fact that we're getting this functionality in both the EVF and the LCD. And this brings me to the next reason I like the M50, the electronic viewfinder or EVF. An electronic viewfinder is different than what we have on DSLRs, which have an optical viewfinder. And let me take a second to explain the difference because it's very important. In a DSLR like the SL2 or SL3, light travels through the lens and then hits a mirror that sits right in front of the sensor. The image is then redirected up the camera where it hits another mirror and then one more and then finally it shows it to you through the optical viewfinder. So it's essentially a prism. And when you take a picture or shoot video, the mirror flips out of the way so that the sensor is exposed to light. In a mirrorless camera like the M50, 
Obviously, there's no mirror, so the sensor is constantly exposed to light, and the electronic viewfinder is simply showing you what the sensor is capturing. So why does this matter? First, unlike an optical viewfinder, an electronic viewfinder will actually show you the exposure that you're gonna get before you take the picture. So with a DSLR, if you take a picture, look at the preview and it looks too dark, you know that you need to add more light. So you might open up your aperture or shorten your shutter speed or raise your ISO. But the image in the viewfinder doesn't actually change because it's still just a series of mirrors showing you a reflection of what's happening in front of you. With an electronic viewfinder, as you make changes to aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, what you see in the viewfinder will actually change as you're making those adjustments. So if you open up the aperture to let in more light, you'll literally see it happening in real time. And this makes it much easier to get a proper exposure and it's a super easy way to learn because you don't have to wait until after you take the picture in order to see the results. Now the next big advantage, which I brought up in the autofocus section, is that the EVF uses the same advanced autofocus system we get when we're using the LCD. It's more accurate, it offers a subject tracking plus face and eye detection for photos and a lot more autofocus points to select from. Just as an example, the SL2 and SL3 have nine autofocus points when you're using the optical viewfinder. And depending on which lens you use, the M50 can have up to 143 autofocus points, which clearly give it the edge. There's also this awesome functionality where you can drag your thumb on the LCD when you're shooting photos or video, and the focus point will follow the position of your thumb and either move the focus point or lock onto the subject, depending on your setting. One other advantage of the EVF is that you can use it when shooting video. So if you're filming outside and it's really bright and you're having a tough time seeing the image on the LCD, you can just use the EVF and get a perfectly sharp and easy to see image for framing and for achieving a proper exposure. Next, I wanna talk about color science. The M50 renders colors beautifully right in the camera. And this has been a Canon strength for years. And personally, I appreciate being able to grab a JPEG right out of the camera and use it without having to mess around with the colors too much. If you wanna have even more control over your image, you can always shoot in RAW and then you can really start playing around when editing. I test and use a lot of cameras and I've been doing this for a long time, so I can get good results with any camera at this point. But being able to get great color and accurate skin tones in the camera is awesome and it saves me so much time. This way, I don't have to edit every single picture and if I just wanna quickly share something on social media or text it to someone, I can just wirelessly transfer it to my phone and it already looks great. Now before I continue, if you like what you've seen so far, let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. It helps me know what kind of content you like so that I can make more of it. And if it's your first time here, Go ahead and hit the subscribe and notification buttons so you can stay up to date on all the latest gear and tutorials. Okay, so the next reason I think the M50 is still a good camera is the video options. If you shoot in full HD or 1080p and you're using NTSC, then you can choose between 24, 30, and 60 frames per second. If you're using PAL, you'll see the options for 25 and 50 frames per second. If you want a softer and more cinematic look, then I suggest that you shoot at either 24 or 25 frames per second. If you want the sharpest and most crisp footage you can get from the M50, then go ahead and use 60 or 50 frames per second. I like a little bit of both, so I shoot all my videos at 30 frames per second. Like I mentioned before, I created a cinematic look tutorial for the M50, and I'll link to it up in the corner and in the description, so you can see how you can get your footage to go from this to this. Now, being able to shoot at 60 frames per second and then editing in 24 frames per second will allow you to do slow motion by a factor of 2.5 times. And again, if you have questions about how that works, go ahead and check out the tutorial. The M50 can also shoot 4K in 24 and 25 frames per second, but with some limitations like the lack of dual pixel autofocus and an additional crop. I don't often shoot 4K with this camera, but in my tutorials, I do mention a few situations where it's actually very helpful. And 4K is one of those features that I was alluding to in the beginning, when I mentioned having to figure out what features you need and what will actually work for what you're doing. Do you need 4K? Do you have a computer that's powerful enough to edit 4K footage? Do you wanna deal with the additional storage needed for the larger files and then having to invest in faster and more expensive memory cards? 
There is not one right answer that will work for everyone, but in my opinion, if you really want 4K from a mirrorless APS-C Canon camera, you should look at the M6 Mark II, which is a great option. All right, the next reason I wanted to talk about is this awesome fully articulating touchscreen. This is by far my favorite design because of regardless of how I use the M50, I can always have the screen facing me. If I'm shooting from the hip or the camera is low to the ground, I can just go ahead and have the screen flipped up so again, I can see what's going on. If the camera's on a tripod or if I'm shooting over a group of people, I can just flip it down so I can see it when it's over my head. If I'm using a slider or a gimbal, there are times where having the screen face the side like this is the best option. And this is also true if I'm shooting vertically and the camera is below eye level, I can still see exactly how my shot is framed without having to get my head all the way down to the ground. And finally, if I'm in front of the camera or vlogging, I can just flip the screen to face the front. Now, not everyone is gonna use their camera in all the ways that I mentioned, and some people prefer the more compact flip screen design on something like the M6 Mark II. But I always like having all these options available to me when I need them. Now on top of the flexibility in terms of positioning, the screen is also a full touch screen. So I can control the camera from the screen without having to use the directional pad, buttons, or dials. I can set focus, control my aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, and I can even enable touch shutter, which will get focus and then take a shot by touching the screen so I don't have to use the shutter. The touch functionality also extends to the main menu. And this is why I think the user experience on the M50 is so great. Canon's menu system is super simple. Everything is organized into sections that make sense and the labels are easy to understand. Remember that I mentioned that some cameras can be really complicated and the menu system can quickly become overwhelming? This is definitely not the case with the M50. So not only is it simple to understand, Using the touchscreen is a very intuitive way to interact with the camera, so I really like having that option. The last thing I want to mention about the screen is the quick menu, which can be activated by clicking the Q set button in the center of the directional pad or by hitting the Q on the top right of the screen. Now this brings up the quick menu, which has all of the most used functions and settings. You can change focus mode, drive mode, white balance, picture style, and a lot more, all without having to go into the main menu or using any of the buttons or dials. Next, I wanna very quickly talk about the sensor. The M50 uses a 24 megapixel sensor, which we see Canon use on much more expensive DSLR models. So we're getting a higher level of performance at a lower price. And 24 megapixels is plenty for what most people are ever going to need out of this type of camera. Manufacturers are constantly producing cameras with higher and higher resolution, and there are definitely advantages to that. What I encourage you to do is ask yourself if paying a higher price for more megapixels makes sense for what you plan on doing with your pictures. And again, there's not one answer that works for everyone. But to put things in perspective, a 12.9 inch iPad Pro has a 2048 by 2832 resolution. And the M50 images are 6,000 by 4,000. So think about how much cropping you plan on doing and what makes sense for you. All right, moving on, the next reason I like the M50 has to do with lens options. And before everyone freaks out about the limited selection of EFM lenses, let me explain. The M50 natively accepts EFM lenses which are light and compact. This makes for a great travel setup whether you're using the kit lens or one of my favorite lenses, the 22mm f2. Now, there has been some well-deserved criticism of this mount because Canon has not released enough fast, sharp prime lenses and it was great to see that Sigma came out with their 16, 30, and 56 millimeter f1.4 DCDN lenses, which now give us some fantastic options. I have a video dedicated to these three lenses, and if you're considering this camera or you already own it, I definitely recommend that you check it out, so I'll link to it up in the corner and in the description. In addition to the available EFM lenses, we can also use an EF, EFS to EFM adapter, and now we can use any of Canon's extensive lineup of lenses or even third-party lenses. A really popular option is a lens like the 50mm f1.8, but we're not limited to budget lenses, and even the top-of-the-line L-series glass will work 
beautifully with the M50 and get us fantastic results. We can also use lenses designed for APS-C sensors like my favorite lens, the Sigma 18-35 f1.8. It's fast, it's versatile, and it's a super powerful combo with the M50. Now, one last option that we have is using lenses designed for full frame camera with a speed booster like this one from Comlight. First, it's a focal range reducer with a crop factor of 0.71, meaning that if we look at something like the 50 millimeter lens, which would normally give us an 80 millimeter field of view on a Canon APS-C sensor, we can now multiply that by 0.71 and get approximately a 57 millimeter field of view. It's not exactly like what we would get by using a 50 millimeter on a full frame sensor, but it's a significant improvement over the APS-C crop. Not only that, we're also able to open the aperture wider than the lens settings. So instead of f1.8, we can now shoot at f1.2, which lets a lot more light onto the sensor and gives us an even shallower depth of field for additional separation from the background. Now this is a super powerful option, so in case that was confusing, let me know in the comment section and I'll create a dedicated video to explain and demonstrate the speed booster. Now finally, Canon also announced that they're releasing five new EFM lenses. So a 15 millimeter F2, a 52 millimeter F2, a 62 millimeter F4 macro, an 18 to 45 millimeter F2.8 to F4, and a 100 to 300 telephoto, which I'm super excited to play with. I'll definitely have reviews for all five lenses when they come out later this year, so make sure that you have that notification bell on. I also have a more detailed video about my favorite lenses for the M50, and I'll link to it up in the corner and in the description. All right, moving on to the next reason I like the M50, we have the mic input, which lets you connect an external microphone and then get much better audio than the built-in microphone. Now, a lot of people spend the majority of their time looking at cameras and lenses, but they completely overlook audio. And this can be a big mistake because audio plays a huge role in how the viewer perceives your video. So here I am recording directly into the M50's built-in microphone. I'm in a pretty well-treated room. I'm sitting probably about three feet away from the camera using the Sigma 30 millimeter F1.4. So this should give you a good idea of what you should expect if you're using the built-in microphone Again, in a pretty well-treated room. And now I'm using the Deity V-Mic D3 Pro. I've got it right out of frame, it's right out here, and then it's wired directly into the M50. So I'm still using the M50's preamps, but I'm able to turn them down because I'm letting the microphone amplify my sound. So this should give you a good idea of what you're gonna get when you're using a professional microphone plug directly into the M50. I'll put some links in the description to a few options that would pair well with the M50. And let me know if you have any questions about audio because I know it could be a little intimidating. All right, so that brings us to number 10. And don't forget that I added a bonus reason at the end. So the number 10 reason why I think the M50 is still a good option is the price. Right now in the US, you can buy the M50 with a 15 to 45 millimeter kit lens for about 600 bucks brand new. You can find it for even less used. So this ties right into what I was talking about. I would rather have you buy a less expensive body to start with and then spend the rest of your budget on lenses, lighting, audio, and accessories. In my experience, a better lens improves my images more than a better body and better lighting will make an even bigger difference. So starting out with a less expensive body and then investing in lenses is definitely a philosophy that I subscribe to. All right, so that brings us to the bonus item. And one of the reasons some people have for not getting the M50 is the lack of clean HDMI output for live streaming. We pretty much always had the ability to use paid software to get a clean signal to our streaming software. But earlier this year, Canon released the EOS webcam utility which now lets you stream for free with the M50. I created a dedicated video showing you how to do that as well as troubleshoot the most common error that people run into, so make sure to check that out if that's something that you're interested in. You can use the M50 for something like Zoom or in a streaming software like OBS and really up the production value of your streams. All right, so I did my best to narrow it down to just 10 items plus the one bonus item, but there are definitely some honorable mention features like in-body time-lapse, remote control functionality for both photography and video using the Canon Camera Connect app, the ability to customize the functions of the buttons and dials, and a lot more which I cover in my in-depth review. In my opinion, the M50 still represents an excellent value Value, even in 2020 for someone who doesn't need 4k it's a great beginner mirrorless camera and will allow you to learn 
everything you need to know about exposure. Easy to use, has dual pixel autofocus when using both the electronic viewfinder and the LCD. Excellent color science, has a great fully articulating touchscreen, a 24 megapixel sensor, compatibility with three different lens systems when using an adapter and an external mic input for better audio. Now I'd love to know what you think about the M50. You think it's still a good beginner mirrorless camera and then why or why not? If you're looking for a more advanced APS-C mirrorless camera from Canon, you should definitely check out the M6 Mark II and I'll put links in the description to my detailed review of the M6 Mark II and a comparison with the M50. The M50 body plus the kit lens sells for under 600 bucks brand new, and I'll put links in the description to the body as well as some lenses and accessories that I like because there are always specials and discounts and the links will be automatically updated with the lowest pricing. I really hope I was able to give you a good overview of the M50 in 2020. If I did, it would mean a lot to me if you let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and join the community by hitting the subscribe and notification buttons. For more opportunities for live interaction, you can always find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Tech Gear Talk. And you know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon. I hope it's recording. I don't know if it's recording. I know that one's recording. Okay, cool. <clears throat> So I can just click on a subject and the MC, no, but that's not, that's not true. I really, I really, I really, I really, really. How about I really try to get this sentence right next time? Compatibility, compatibility, compatibility with, combat. <laughs> I'm struggling with this last part. Like I can't get it right. I really, 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 really. Really, maybe, maybe it's that word really that I can't say. All right, I got this.